Hey guys, Waggish American here today with a very special video. Hornby US has sent me an incredibly hyped kit and asked that I do an unboxing of the model. The subject, of course, is the legendary new 124th scale Hellcat. Hmm. I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to find a bigger table for this review. The box obviously is gigantic. This thing rivals the box of subjects as large as my 72nd scale B-52 or even the 48th scale C-17. Actually, I think the box is the same uh, height, uh, length and width as the C-17. The only difference is the C-17 is probably double the depth. That is a big, big box. The box feels hefty and it's certainly not wasted space or a big box for sales puffery. The design is pretty typically Airfix. The familiar graphical format with very detailed and impressive photos of the company finished model on the side. Now you all know how I feel about CGI box art, but I must say if you've decided to go with a computer illustration, this is how you do a computer illustration. The scene is dynamic and interesting. The only thing I'd note is that the zero doesn't really look like part of the scene. Something about it just doesn't quite match the rest of the art. I do really like how they depicted weathering on the subject. Too many illustrations of glossy blue aircraft have them overweathered, overchipped, or worst, faded. They seem to have nailed the weathering on this model perfectly. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of on the box is this information box up here. While it is really interesting having the story of the aircraft they chose to feature, it seems like this information would be better suited to the box sides or a blurb in the instruction manual. Alright, let's crack this thing open. And while I have it set up, let me grab the um, booklets and uh, let's grab the clear parts while I'm at it. Head back on over to my better booth and talk about these in more detail. Back briefly in my normal air quotes studio, I can run through a few of the smaller pieces of the kit, including the instructions, decals, and clear parts. The instructions follow the new Airfix mold. The booklet is a book in and of itself. Even compared to other companies' flagship large-scale models, this thing is massive. In total, with all options accounted for, the build comes out to just over 300 separate steps, not including painting or decals. The instruction booklet for something this complicated is an excellent example of something that I think has set many of Airfix's releases far above the crowd. While I'm not the largest fan of 3D CG models being used in art, 3D rendering makes Airfix instructions the most reliable and informative I have yet used. The booklet opens with renders of various building options. No squinting at subpar illustrations or relying on small symbols throughout the book are necessary to plan your build. It is simple to weigh the variance and plan the course of the build through the book before you even begin construction. Beyond this, there isn't anything particularly notable about the instructions. Again, Airfix's policy of printing instructions in color and labeling the last completed step in red helps tremendously in keeping organized and helping you to minimize mistakes. One other thing, this page uh, right here this page right here is one of the greatest things I have seen in a kit. So many other large-scale guys totally ignore details finer than what they provide. Airfix, on the other hand, has done everything possible to help the builder fully detail their model. I honestly can't describe how helpful this wiring page will be when I get around to building this thing. Airfix has done a number of great things with their painting guides. First, obviously, they are all printed in color. This is always welcome, but I think the best thing that they did stems from printing these guides on separate sheets other than the instruction booklet. Instead of forcing the modeler to fight to keep the giant book open and in a convenient place that they can see, Airfix has provided a large, visible single sheet for every necessary piece of painting and decaling. 
including a separate sheet just for stencils, which is another thing I really like that a lot of these companies started doing. I, and if any of you have ever built anything that has a lot of decals, you know how annoying it is trying to get trying to see stencils next to insignia over camouflage. Airfix cuts all that out. It's also nice to include humble colors on the sheet instead of calling out a color by ID dumber and nothing else, forcing a modeler who does not use Humbrol to hunt through a book or the internet to find a starting point for conversion. The inclusion of the Sunfish, uh, the Operation Sunfish paint scheme is particularly pleasing. When I first heard this kit announced, I was honestly worried that the only options would be in gloss sea blue, which, given my long-term project, is quickly becoming my least favorite color to paint. This scheme offers an interesting alternative to a common bird. Additionally, with this paint scheme, you can actually correctly weather the airframe. All techniques from sh fading to staining to discoloration are correct. Not to mention chipping. Now, I don't think I need to speak too much about the decals. I feel comfortable saying that Airfix is a leader as far as these go. I haven't ever built a new Airfix kit that doesn't have incredibly thin, perfectly printed, highly detailed, and easily conforming decals. These particular examples are in register, very vibrant. My camera's not picking up particularly well, but this is, these are some of the most beautiful colors I've ever seen on a decal. And very interestingly, they have almost, I'm going to try to zoom, I don't know if you can see that, they have almost no carrier film. The only thing here that is a potential concern is how abnormally glossy that they seem to be. I obviously don't know how well they'll work until I actually get them on the model, but I am just generally uncomfortable with glossy decals. They don't tend to play very well with decal solvents, so if for any reason these decals don't instantly suck down, Getting them to, the, to conform will be a bit more difficult than matte decals. Before I go back to where the rest of the kit is, I wanted to talk about this kit's clear parts. Firstly, they are very well protected in packaging. I already removed them from the vacuum sealed bag that they're in, but inside the vacuum sealed bag, they get a sheet of bubble wrap and are wrapped in some kind of paper material. These are the nicest clear parts I have ever seen in any kit. There's not a sense of mold flaw or scratch on any one of these parts. I don't see even the hint of any seams, and the glass is so thin it almost looks in scale in some places. It's also the clearest, I don't know if I have anything with words on it to show you. It is the clearest and least warping I have ever seen cockpit. Honestly, you don't need the, the cockpit open. You will be able to see every bit of detail in the cockpit perfectly fine. Can it be closed with glass this perfect? Of course, I'm probably going to open mine up anyway because with as much details in this kit, why not? Why take away anything? But you don't have to if you don't want to. All right, let's get to the meat of this beast. To give you an idea of the, pardon the pun, scale of this model, it is formed from eight giant sprues, plus the one already discussed, each separately bagged. They fit tightly into the box, filling the space well, offering ample protection from our friendly package handlers. The first sprue out of the box features tailplanes, flaps, and miscellaneous ribs. These are all molded well. Pretty much every part has fairly large ejector pin marks, but nowhere on any of these parts would they be visible on the completed model. I only see one faint sink mark, 
And even at that, between writing this, the script for this video and pulling out the parts, I seem to have lost it. So I guess scratch that. I can't. When you consider that there's as much plastic on this one sprue as there is in pretty much any 70 second scale model, the complete lack of any The second sprue begins to delve into the visible parts of the cockpit as well as a few hoses and pieces related to the undercarriage. And this brings me to a quick note about this model and a big reason that I think Airfix is out punching other large scale manufacturers. This comment comes down to the tires. They don't waste time on the rubber wheels gimmick that even companies like Tamiya have fallen prey to. These are always subpar in detail, usually difficult to clean up, and are pretty much guaranteed to quickly fail and break apart. Now quickly I mean over the span of years, but rubber breaks down. Which is particularly tragic on something like this, a model that is likely to become the queen of the shelf of anyone who spends the time and money to build it. I would also point, like to point out, if I can find the part here, the molded on seat belts. These are a nice touch and perfectly capture the look and thickness of the real thing. Again, many other manufacturers rely on janky alternatives like fabric belts, which can look nice but are very troublesome. Or in the worst case, even in 30 second scale that I've seen, is just straight, not even like shaded, just straight flat color decals. The next sprue is taken up almost completely by ribs and various pieces of interior structure. The only thing really of note on this, on this uh, section is the 50 caliber machine guns. These are very nicely molded. However, if you are going for the most possible detail, you may want to consider an aftermarket for the barrels. The kill ones are fine, but at this scale, you will notice the difference between a solid piece and the separate barrel and cooling shroud that aftermarket can provide. That said, after looking over the parts, I think this is literally the only place on this kit where aftermarket might be worth the money, unless you want a different decal scheme than provided. But as far as pieces go, this would be the only thing I'd even consider replacing. The next sprue focuses on the engine area, with much of the space taken up by these incredibly thin, especially relatively, like not even just relative to scale, relative to anything. How thin that is, it's like a knife edge almost. Incredibly thin pieces of the cowling. Again, these parts are so flawless, I don't even really have anything else to say. The next sprue is full of weaponry. Most of it is taken over by external stores. Missiles, bombs, tanks, etc. Everything on this sprue is molded perfectly cleanly. The only thing you may want to consider altering focuses on the bombs. And this is no fault of Airfix. This is just a general detail tip that you could really apply to pretty much any large scale World War II aircraft that features bombs. These bombs had a shell of cast steel, and even at this scale, smooth may be correct if you're going off of strictly scale impression, but if you want to translate the idea of these weapons being cast, you can replicate the effect with a couple of techniques um, using things like thinned Tamiya putty, I believe uh, Mr. Surface Primer can also be used for this. Uh, don't worry, I'll do a how-to video whenever I get around to building this. Or maybe, I don't think I'm going to use all of these bombs, maybe I'll throw one of these together pretty soon here and show you how to do that. The next sprue is focused on the engine, and the word of the day here is fine. No part has flash, I can't see a single sink mark. The cooling fins on the cylinders, let me show you how fine these are, these are probably smaller than a lot of 70 second scale engines. See if I can't get that in the light. My camera can't pick it up, but this light set up. But those are the cooling fins are many and they are fine. Also, all these parts are covered where they need to in very small bolts and screws and rivets, and it's just incredible. And in scale hoses abound. This is truly a complete engine. It could be a kit in and of itself. 
The only thing you really need to add are ignition wires, and Airfix, like I already noted, is smart enough to tell you how, exactly how in the instruction book. The last two sprues focus on the big pieces, the external shell of the model. The wings are incredible. Again, following the apparent theme of this kit, they are perfectly clean and tightly molded. Thankfully, Airfix has correctly detailed the surface. Panel lines are fine and are kept to a minimum, the surface instead full of in-scale rivets. The wings are perfect. The only thing of note on both of these sheets are a few rivet holes in the fuselage. Again, I don't know for sure if I can pick this up in this light. You can kind of see it. It isn't a big deal, but some of the some of the rivet holes on the lower part of the fuselage are just a tad bit soft. You may want to poke the area gently with a pin before painting just to be sure that you maintain the detail through priming and paint. Also noteworthy, Airfix seems to have carefully selected the positions of ejector of ejector pins. Even though they are fairly large, as is typical, they're soft plastic. Based on the parts and instructions, they should all be hidden from view. Well, there it is. I don't know, guys, what more is there to say. This kit is a total work of art. Besides that very small sink mark that I lost and could not find on recording on one of the tailplanes, I didn't see a single molding flaw anywhere on the sprues that would actually matter to the build. Also incredible, even with parts as huge as the fuselage and as flat as the wings, also as thin as the wings, I didn't notice any warp. Not a slight warp, no warp. The decal throughout, the detail throughout is incredible. The fact that they provide nearly every hose is one of the best things I've ever seen. A spool of 0.7mm wire or lead is the only thing you need to totally detail this thing. Now again, I will admit that I've never actually completed a large scale model, but I do have 8 or 10 of them up in the stash, so I've pawed through a lot of their contents, and this is by f this far outstrips any of the other models I've got, any of the 30 second scale models I've got, in detail, clean molding, pretty much any metric you could use to measure it, just on looking at the box and the contents of the box, this one wins. Also, the thing is gigantic. I can't get over how big it is. 24th scale. You wouldn't think that 24th and 32nd scale are that big of a difference, but you know what? I need to just demonstrate this for a moment. Because this video, the, the subject of this video and the eventual build video was provided by Airfix, I won't chill for any of their competitors' products, even though I don't believe they make this plane in the scale I'm about to show. But this is an F6, a 148 scale F6F. I'm just about finished. Now I already put everything back in the box and I don't feel like scrambling to get it back out. But just take a look at the difference in box size to almost finished model. 48 scale to 24 scale. So yeah, the thing is huge. Absolutely gigantic. Shelf space, the other nice thing is even though it's big, it's a lot of stuff in a manageable space. It's not like a 48 scale or even 72nd scale B17 where the model is big but it just takes up a lot of space and it's ungainly. The F6F is a fairly tightly packaged, if you measure it out, it's mostly square dimensions. So even though it's large, finding a spot to put it won't be too difficult because it's, it's large but tight. It's one of the nice things about this specific airplane. It fits a lot into a small package. It doesn't, uh, it's not like a 32nd scale B-17, which even though that is a significantly larger model, also just things are weird. Like it, its landing gear are close to each other. You don't need like a three foot depth shelf to hold up. You won't need like a three foot depth shelf to hold this up. I can probably fit this completed model on my f one foot shelf. So it might be a little bit tight, and I don't know for sure I'm going to be able to, but it's a lot, it'll be a lot easier to find shelf space for this than you think. A huge thank you to Airfix and Hornby for seeing something worthwhile on my channel. In addition to providing this kit for an inbox, they've sent me two other kits to build. Their 148 scale Gloucester Meteor FR9, 
and their new 148 scale JU87, which as you can see is already in primer and should be finished. I don't know when the build video will come out, but the model will be finished in the next couple of weeks here. One final thing, don't expect a build video for this model anytime soon. Besides how long it'll take anyone to build, especially to build well, I will be moving in less than two months, and after that, um, builds involving an airbrush will stop for at least nine months, possibly a year. I will continue to do figures on the channel, but details on existing and future and stalled builds will come soon, so do keep an eye on the channel and watch. If you're curious, Alright, thanks for watching, thanks again to Airfix and Hornby, and I will see you guys next time.